Well, today is a pretty exciting day for me. You know, for a long time now, I've had these these giant lithium batteries in the shop, uh, just kind of working out a plan for how I'm gonna get them all uh, connected and, and build a system that's gonna work for us in our 2003 uh, Winnebago Class A motorhome. You know, this is all part of a, a larger project to, to really build out uh, a really cool and off-grid setup uh, for this rig uh, because we primarily boondock and, and dry camp all the time. So being off-grid is, is how we roll. And this is a major part of the system that I'm glad uh, I can finally get uh, all put together. Now, the previous uh, project video you might have seen, we got the inverter, the Multi Plus 2, all set up and mounted and installed in the rig. And it's nice to have uh, have power for heat and all that stuff. So I wanted to get that done first. It's just easier to uh, get that all mounted on the side there without these batteries being in the way. Let's get started. We'll get the old batteries out, get these suckers mounted, and we'll be up and running. I'm gonna remove the two house batteries for now, but I'm gonna leave the converter hooked up because uh, once I take these batteries out, I'm not gonna have 12 volt power, but the converter is gonna provide the 12 volt power for the lights and stuff. You can see that if I turn the converter off, right there, out go the lights. I've already flipped the, uh, the, the main battery disconnect here off, so there's nothing connected to the batteries. Positive, negative. Can remove this guy. Right. Take it out. Now we got no house batteries now. And there's the old guys. Well, it's a new day and a pretty wet one at that. But I wanted to go over a few things first before I uh, move on. Uh, I 
I'm jumping forward just a little bit. I got a couple other things done that I want to show you. Uh, first of all, good news, the inverter and the batteries are all connected, hooked up, working just fine. Um, I also uh, disconnected the, uh, the existing uh, converter charger so it's not providing 12 volt DC power right now. Don't need it anymore. But I'm gonna leave it for now. I'll, I'll actually physically remove it uh, soon. I just haven't gotten around to it. One thing I wanted to show you was actually how I connected the battery to the, uh, the existing 12 volt system in the RV. When I removed the batteries from the battery compartment that's right next to here, you know, I still had those positive and negative uh, cable that connected them to the coach. So what I ended up doing was actually just uh, running two additional cables, a uh, red and a black from the bus bars here on the battery, and then just running them through this hole and this conduit uh, to that compartment on the other side. And I had a uh, an extra bus bar that I just never used at one point, and I just ended up using that. I bolted it to the side of the battery compartment on the other side of this wall. It's got a positive and negative side to it, so I was able to use it for both the positive and the negative. And then that's how I joined that to those existing cables that are already connected to the coach and all the relays. And uh, once I did that, everything just you know fired right up and, and, and I had 12 volt power uh, into the rest of the system. So that was pretty easy and straightforward. Having that bus bar available there now really makes it a lot easier for me to add additional 12 volt circuits uh, throughout you know, the underside of the rig. Like I plan on you know, hooking up a, a 12 volt power to, uh, to an air compressor and, and do a few other things. So it's just a convenient place to be able to make those connections now. All right, the other thing I wanted to show you was the way I, I secured this whole battery bank to the coach from the top and the back. Now, I didn't want it all resting on the, the bottom of the compartment here because it's just a lot of weight and I didn't want to have to support it from the bottom, which I've done in the past for our, our Class C. But what I did is I got some half inch threaded rod and since I do have this uh, strut channel that it's sitting in on the bottom, I could put, a, put an anchor bolt in there and then on the front side, and this is going to be the same on both sides. So I'll just show you this side. It's easier to access. Now in the front, so I have this, uh, this rod that goes all the way up. I've got a little sleeve that connects two rods. And then it actually goes through the, the top here, which goes through the floor of the RV. And I have a, a metal plate that that's going through and a bolt at the top. So that allows me to actually pull this up to the top vertically, just enough to take the weight off of this compartment. And then the back actually has another big metal plate and it's bolted into this other uh, piece of strut channel at the bottom and then bolted to the, to the back uh, shelf there that has a lot of support. So between the two of these on both sides, I'm actually able to, to tighten down those bolts and, and actually lift the entire battery bank up uh, just enough to take that weight off of the compartment. And then finally, to keep it from, from shifting around in transit, I put a couple of uh, lag bolts here. And that's enough to just keep this whole thing from moving at all while the uh, RV is in motion. I think it's gonna work out. I think it's gonna be a pretty good setup. You can see I have the Serbo GX hooked up as well. There's an HDMI cable and a USB power cable that's connected to that. That heads up to the, the Victron Touch 50 display unit and that's going to be mounted right above the electrical distribution panel for the uh, AC side of the house. I need to create a nice little mounting surface for that to be displayed in there and I picked up some, uh, some ABS plastic, just kind of black uh, panel that I can cut out and make a nice little little control surface for that display.
Okay, I just need to go reconnect it to the servo. I think this is a, a good place for this, uh, but let me know what you think. You know, I thought of putting it up here, uh, but I thought maybe we'll just keep it hidden this time and just keep it in here. It's easy to access just by opening this door and I can kind of see all the, the power system information. And it's right here where the, where the main AC distribution panel is anyway. But I like it. Um, I'm glad to have it all hooked up. Uh, I'm just learning though about the servo and I don't have everything hooked up to it yet. I'm certainly gonna be adding more, you know, as we get the solar charge controllers and all that stuff hooked up. That's all gonna be connected through the servo as well. But I don't have it hooked to the internet and all that fancy stuff yet, but I will. Yeah, I hope you got some information that uh, is helpful from this uh, this battery install. If you want to get more detailed information about how all the connections are made uh, to the different components, and be sure to check out my system diagram that I put together for you. And it has a detailed list of parts and equipment and stuff if you want to check that out and just kind of see how things are connected on a diagram. It's kind of hard to see in this compartment with just wires everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, go check that out. It's uh, rvstito.com slash downloads is where it's going to be. But I'll drop a link also in the video description. But yeah, let me know if you got any comments about this this install and this, how, the, how I did the batteries and all that stuff. Uh, you know, I'll see you down in the comment section of the video and we'll talk about it some more. So until next time, we'll get into the solar, uh, all the solar setup and um, I'm just happy to have this part done for now. So take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.